The next one, and this is where we're sort of hitting the middle of the spectrum, is the meat grinder. And um, unfortunately, this is the one that can look the worst. Um, so it's severe biting and picking of your nails, cuticles, skin around the nails. Um, oftentimes, especially for biting your nails, um, it can lead to permanent damage. So the condition of the nails, nails have been bitten past the quick. Uh, they have been bitten into, down into the pink area, which is where the nail bed is. So um, that can get very, very painful. Nails are almost always compulsively in your mouth and can be bitten and picked at all the time. Nails are frequently raw and sometimes even bloody, uh, which of course leads to infection and you may have sustained permanent damage to your nail bed. So actually the hyponychium is where the, it's that spot where the, the nail plate leaves the nail bed and becomes the free edge. And so the more you push back on that with biting, you can actually shorten the look of your nail bed because you're, after so many years of doing that, it's not repairable, it, it is permanent. So for the meat grinder, the condition of the cuticle line and the skin, um, skin is often bitten and picked and raw. It's sore and it's inflamed and it's often infected from uh, exposure to germs and bacteria. Uh, the skin is likely dry and prone to cracking and peeling and you may have permanent scarring as a result. Uh, and you may experience other OCD symptoms, including frequent hand washing, which then of course leads to drying out your skin more, which then leads to more biting and picking. And so it can become an issue, <laughs> as you know. Okay, so the signs and symptoms that present and your diagnosis. Um, the nails actually, and this is how we came up with the name Meat Grinder, because the nails frequently look a little bit like hamburger they've just they're so they're so raw and not pretty and that's why they go in pockets a lot so there is an intense social stigma uh, a lot of shame from peers and family and everybody going to stop just stop um, there's feelings of self beration which means beating yourself up for not being able to quit uh, people don't understand why you just can't quit they just say to stop. Uh, keep your hands in your pockets or tucked out of view all the time. Uh, you may have also ADD, ADHD, ODD, OCD, just we'll throw a whole bunch of letters at you, um, or other mental health challenges that can relate to the biting and picking. And sometimes um, it, it, because of these repetitive type of behaviors and the brains need to do that, um, Anyway, it just keeps going. Okay. Um, how does it look? So let's take a look at these pictures um, and what can you do? So we get into those triggers. You have this uncontrollable urge to bite and pick and you've tried many other remedies with very limited success. Now you have this frequent obsession with wanting to quit, but you're actually able to, um, unable to make that change. Internal, there may be internal or external stresses or anxiety is often a trigger and you find the relief through biting and picking. Okay. Oh, and you know what? I mean, let's look at this picture. Um, this is one of our before and afters of somebody who uh, worked with, worked on this and replaced her negative habit. Um, and you can see how she had just ground those nails down um, but look at how well they've grown and actually her nail bed has th the nails have fixed themselves <laughs> so her her nail bed isn't that short anymore so this is again that the body's ability to repair itself if we haven't been doing too much damage for too long okay next slide um, so here's how it looks and what you can do in terms of that. Um, 
The treatment is for sure, and you guys are going to see a lot of overlap here. Uh, you want to hydrate your skin and your nails with uh, our nail oil and lotion stick. Um, you want to use a nail file to smooth those rough edges rather than biting them. You want to use gum, ec drinking extra water, uh, using a hand fidget toys to help replace those urges of physical that are for that physical stimulation that it's needed. If applicable, find an accountability buddy or other external accountability sources like journaling or posting photos, etc., to support you when you feel the urge to bite and pick. Um, that's why our this group that you've joined is so important because of all of the amazing people in it who can help you and be that support group. You also want to potentially observe and write down and track your biting and picking habits and what are the things that are triggering it. Is it the fact that you're, um, you know, you've got a final coming up and you're trying to study for it or you're a mom and your kids are screaming all the time and it's just giving you massive anxiety or you're having, um, job stress or marital stress, all of these things can trigger that. And so you want to pay attention to like what is going on right now and causing me to want to do that. Um, the other really good thing is keep a photo of the nails you like to have that are very similar to your nail shape. There's so many amazing bloggers out there that you can find somebody who has um, we call it our nail twin. It's almost weird when you find a nail twin and where you look at the pictures and you're like, those look just like my nails. And it was, it was weird when it happened to me because it turned out that it was a gallon in the UK. And I put the pictures right next to each other of my nails and her nails. And I showed them to my family and they were like, why are you showing me pictures of your nails? They're they're the same, Mom. And it was funny. I go, well, actually, they're not. <laughs> Two different people. So anyway, photos can help a lot.